Welcome to our series exploring the enigmatic realm of unexplained deaths and mysteries. Join us as we delve into perplexing cases that defy conventional understanding, where each clue raises more questions. The origin of life on Earth, one of the greatest mysteries in science. How did simple molecules swimming in the primordial oceans give rise to the complex web of life we see today? Over time, brilliant minds have proposed various theories, each offering a different glimpse into the ancient past. Today, we'll listen in on a conversation between two friends, Emily and Jack, as they explore the possibilities. You know, the more I read about the origin of life, the more confused I get. There are so many theories. Primordial soup, hydrothermal vents, panspermia. It's like a mystery novel with too many suspects. Yeah, it does feel like a whodunit, except in this case, it's more of a how done it. I guess it all starts with the, right? The idea that life began in a chemical soup of organic molecules. The, a concept born in the 1920s from the minds of Alexander Oparin and JBS Haldane. It suggests that Earth's early oceans were a cocktail of chemicals, perhaps methane, ammonia, hydrogen and water vapor, where lightning or ultraviolet radiation sparked the formation of life's building blocks. Right. I think that was tested in the, wasn't it? They tried to recreate early Earth conditions in the lab, sparking electricity through a mix of gases. And voila, they got amino acids, the basic components of proteins. Yeah, exactly. But amino acids alone don't make life. There's still a huge leap between simple organic molecules and a living, self-replicating organism. talking about the the idea that life could have started at the bottom of the ocean near those deep sea vents that spew hot water and minerals exactly those vents create chemical gradients that could have powered the early formation of organic compounds some scientists think that life didn't need sunlight at all just the energy from these vents along with the right chemical reactions it makes sense especially since we found all kinds of weird life forms down there bacteria and organisms that thrive without sunlight, using sulfur or other chemicals for energy. The hydrothermal vent hypothesis paints a vivid picture of life bubbling up from the dark depths of the ocean, sustained by chemical energy rather than sunlight. You mean, that's the theory where life, or at least the building blocks of life, came to Earth on comets or meteoroids, right? It sounds like science fiction, but it's kind of cool to think we might all be aliens. Exactly. If life's ingredients were drifting through space, they could have crashed onto Earth, especially during its early days when the planet was constantly being bombarded by asteroids. So instead of life emerging here, it could have been seeded from space. I like the idea. It means life might be more widespread in the universe than we think. Raises profound questions. Is life a cosmic phenomenon scattered like seeds across the universe, waiting for the right conditions to take root? But not all scientists think we need to look beyond Earth. Then there's the, some say that life didn't start with DNA, but with RNA, since RNA can both store genetic information, catalyze reactions, kind of like a Swiss army knife for molecules. I've heard of that. RNA could have been the first molecule capable of replicating itself, setting the stage for evolution long before DNA and proteins showed up. Exactly. RNA is a good candidate because it can do the job of both information storage, like DNA, and perform some of the functions of enzymes. Once you've got a system that can replicate itself, natural selection can kick in and things start getting more complex. But how do we go from that to something as complex as a cell? And therein lies the crux of the mystery. Even if RNA was the first molecule of life, how did it organize into complex membrane-bound cells capable of growth, reproduction and metabolism? Another theory might hold a clue. Have you heard of that? Instead of starting with genetic molecules like RNA, this idea suggests life might have started with basic metabolic processes. Wait, so life started with chemical reactions, like the kind we see in metabolism today, and RNA or DNA came along later? Yeah, that's the basic idea. The theory is that energy-harnessing reactions could have emerged first, maybe in mineral-rich environments, and then eventually evolved into more complex forms that included genetic material. It's a chemistry-first, genes-later approach. 
This theory challenges the conventional idea that genetic material must come first. Instead, it suggests that life's true origin lies in chemical reactions that harnessed energy long before any sophisticated molecular machinery existed. Oh, and don't forget Ken Smith's clay hypothesis. That's one of the wildest ones, where life started on the surfaces of clay minerals. Yeah, the idea that these clay surfaces acted like templates for organic molecules, helping them assemble into more complex structures, maybe even early forms of RNA. It's funny to think that we might owe our existence to mud, but there's something strangely poetic about life emerging from the Earth itself. The clay hypothesis is a reminder of the interconnectedness between geology and biology. Minerals from the Earth may have played a crucial role in shaping the first life forms, showing how diverse the possible pathways to life might be. Um, and then there's the whole question of chirality. Why are biological molecules like amino acids left-handed and sugars right-handed? What caused that preference? I read that cosmic rays or polarized light from space might have influenced it. It's a small detail, but it adds to the mystery. Yeah, it's like the universe itself had a hand in shaping life's building blocks. Despite all these theories, we still don't have a definitive answer. Did life arise in the shallow seas, deep in the oceans, or even come from the stars? Each hypothesis offers a piece of the puzzle, but the full picture remains just out of reach. For now, the origin of life on Earth continues to inspire, confound and excite those who dare to explore the deepest questions of existence. You know, after all that, I feel like we're no closer to figuring it out, but it's kind of beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, it makes you realize that life, wherever it came from, is a pretty miraculous thing. And so, the mystery of life's origins continues. Though we may not have the answer yet, the journey of discovery is as thrilling as the destination itself. Thank you for joining us on this exploration of the unexplained. We hope these mysteries have sparked your curiosity and encouraged you to delve deeper into the unknown. Until next time, stay curious, stay vigilant, and never stop seeking the truth.